Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. That was a pretty good spin by Susan. Welcome back to a... It, it's like New Year stuff, right? They, uh, I, I go into the nesting phase a couple times a year, like I'm having a bear bear, and I guess the new rigs are bear bears because I'm always making room for more babies. And we've got more babies. Uh, there's more builds on the way. Uh, let, let's start with like the, 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 the primary problematic updates. We've got the... It came from the Workbench series in the higher 20s, right? We've got buggered, the, the VRD with the bug on it. It needs paint and it needs a wheel tire shuffle. It's, it's 48 degrees inside the building right now. So it needs paint. The hard body Bronco needs paint. Uh, I've got a creep cab that needs paint. Uh, I've got Kronk that needs paint. Uh, I should probably start working on painting the Raptor, the SVT Raptor. That's hanging on a peg. Uh, we've got a lot of bodies <laughs> that need paint. So there's a lot of builds that are just kind of sitting. Uh, Kronk got worked on all day yesterday. So he will get an installment upcoming soon. We've got, where is it? By, I wouldn't say popular request, but a couple people have asked. So this will be coming up soon. I have taken it out of the box to ogle it, but haven't put batteries in it or anything. We're, we're going to see. They are on Amazon now, and I was astonished. I was saying, oh, I'm just holding back until they show up on Amazon. Feels pretty nice in the hand, but we're going to see. Uh, it might have menus that infuriate me, so I don't know yet. Also, coming up, uh, sooner rather than later, starting with a quick view, ending with a semi-build series. This is another one of the group sent in by a channel member. This is the gentleman from far away Israel. Uh, he said, do you want to do a review slash build? I said, absolutely, that's what we do here. Still in the box, unsealed. Uh, there you go. Ooh, it's very, it's very heavy. And I am going to, I'm going to issue the same disclaimer when I start the, 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 the quick view and the series on it. Yeah, you know what's happening to that, that thing right over there? I'm going to take it out of the box. I'm going to solder an XT60 on it because I hate IC3s. And then we're going to drive it. Because it's an RTR and I get furious. I get absolutely furious about people who, maybe they don't know it, right? They might consider themselves brand loyalists. You're a Ford guy, you're a Chevy guy in our toy car world. You're a Vanquish guy, you're an Axial guy. Look, because something comes out of the box and it stinks on ice, you can't say, oh, well, it's an RTR. That's how it is. No, no. Because when you say that, you, you allow them to get away with it, to give you less and charge you more. That box is $500, $500. I know we live in, in a time where the dollar doesn't quite pull down as much as it used to, but at the same time, $500 RTRs to me are inexcusable. To a level. You're setting the bar for entry too high. And if you're releasing a $500 RTR when you have plenty of other options available to you, I'm looking at you, Vanquish. When you have a thing like the VRD RTR, you knew this was coming. You knew if you were showing up here on a Friday, you knew this was coming, and it's it's absolutely coming. What do I think? I think that it is another notch. It's not even a spike. There's, there's a line, and it's going down like this. And it was Vanquish up here, and it's Vanquish down here. And I guess all I can figure is Vanquish is trying to be Axial or Traxxas. They're trying to broaden their appeal, and they're in an attempt to broaden that appeal. I will, I will drill into a broadened appeal here in a moment. What they're doing is they're alienating everybody that made Vanquish what Vanquish is. 
Vanquish was a name, was a, was a brand that carried with it some sort of cachet. And in person remarks, talking to other people on Instagram, people have asked me, what do you think about the VRD RTR? And I was like, well, it's a Ford Ice VRD. They put a body on it. They put the same electronics that they probably have a warehouse full of. They nerfed the gearbox. They took all the neat lightened gears out. They put centered gears throughout the whole thing. You are so, 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 so much better off buying a VRD kit and putting stuff in it. The VRD RTR is to try to pull people into the com into the hobby that don't know what they're buying. Because the only other person buying a VRT RTR is the person that has to have every shiny new thing. It offers you nothing. They took out all of the elite parts of the VRD. They threw a body on it. Everybody got to have a tuck body. Vanquish realized they didn't have a tuck body. There's a cliffhanger and a coyote and three different tucks from J Concepts. And hell, even Red Cat's got one. Everybody's got to have a tuck and a bob. So Vanquish was like, we got to have that too. We got to have that. We're going to call it the stance. We're going to put it on rigs and we're going to sell them as RTRs. And I tell you this, and this is not uh, retroactive history. We're not retelling something in order to fit the narrative. The body, the stance body showed up on a main mid December, 10 days before Christmas or so when I was scrolling through bodies because I was looking up, I wanted to see a better picture of that J concept, that new J concepts, uh, which I don't know if I hate it or not. It's kind of weird looking, but I also thought the gozer was weird looking when I first saw it. And now I have two gozers. I kind of like them. So I don't know how I feel about the J concepts one. I am, I am ambivalent to the extreme about the stance. It's another tuck body. Is it too late to get into the tuck industry, especially when you're charging $45 for it, which is pro-line money? But I guess you're trying to you're trying to carry that cachet, which you like the raccoon with the cotton candy when he dipped it in the water and it went away. That's Vanquish's cachet. Uh, as I have said to someone, uh, it's like. And I don't even know, I just know the word because rappers use it in a song. I don't know what Balenciaga is or what Balenciaga does, but I know it's expensive. Vanquish making a VRD RTR. Here's your comp RTR, which is you can now comp on these crap RTR electronics. It's like Balenciaga now at Target. It's the same thing to me. I don't know if I'm Vanquish. I'm trying to do everything to not be Axial. Because Axial is just a finger of the 800-pound Horizon Gorilla. And what's in that box right here? This? It's everything they already had with a new body on it. But it's $500 now. There you go. Vanquish was like, hey, I want to do that too. I don't want to go down the route of premier stuff. I don't want to do that. I want to bring myself down to their level because Traxxas have specialized in RTRs for 30 years. Axial pretty much exclusively does RTRs now. And when I started doing crawler content, says it right there on the sign, established 2020. We are, no, I can't say we're four years in. We're only a couple days into that. Kids are gone. They're gone. It's all RTRs now. There's like nine kits on A main. And it's the same stuff. There's no new kits. The VRD is the only, like, what? Base camp kit in 2023 and VRD kit. What else have we got? Where's the Element Builders Kit 3? I don't want to sound like I'm just raining on Vanquish, but the VRD RTR is right there. Not worth $500, but that's what the market will bear, apparently. It's a, it's a goddamn shame that we've had our options just ripped away from us. There's a reason that I take sheets of aluminum and cut chassis out of them because a rock crawler is axles in a gearbox. Everything else is 100% negotiable and there's no excuse for paying $500 for, I mean, well, you know why you pay $500 for this? The body is $200. There it is. By the time you bought axles and a gearbox, the axles, the gearbox, and the body 
are like $500. And this, you have a bunch of electronics that you can give away to people. So, the VRD RTR makes me unhappy on, an, on, a, on a rational and an irrational level because Vanquish could easily, in my dream, in my dream, when we awoke that morning and VRD was like announcement, and Vanquish was like announcement coming, they could have done this. You ever gone to Deluxe? You ever gone to Drive Tech and look at like, like you can get a Deluxe full compy, crazy, overblown 1500 to 2000 depending on how much you spec it out? Why can't Vanquish just have a page that says, here's what I want. I want, well, it, it'll have a little checkbox that says VS410 chassis. And then right below that, there's a little checkbox that says VRD flat rail chassis. And you click one. And you say, I want straight axles or I want portal axles. I want underdrive in the axles or I want underdrive in the portals, if that's an option. I want a VFD or I want a VFD twin. I want a stubby VFD or I want a stubby VFD twin. And you can just spec it out. Spec it out and build it. Or how about just give us sliders again? How about you sell us Phoenix sliders for two seventy nine dollars again? How about you just do that? Because I think you'd sell many, you wouldn't be able to keep them in stock. But to, to, to mix my analogies with other analogies, we're already making an analogy soup. And we're going to whip it until it's airy. And we're going to bake it. And we're going to make an analogy souffle out of it. If you, if you give people options, they'll be like, awesome. And they'll buy those options. But if you take the options away from people, eventually they'll be like, well... I'm going to go somewhere where I can find options. Traxxas already did it. I have no plans. One of my favorite tires in the world is the Canyon Trail. I love the TRX4 axle. I will, odds are very strong that unless Traxxas comes out with something truly revolutionary, I have bought my last Traxxas vehicle. What is the point of buying a TRX4 when I can't get a sport kit anymore? I have no desire under the sun to buy a TRX4 RTR because it's not going to provide me anything that I want or anything I need. I need a gearbox and I need axles. And depending on how spicy you're feeling, you need a body. So I don't like the way things are going. I understand on some level why things are going where they're going. As I've, as I've said to other people in person, and now we'll put it on the internet, I don't care. Uh, I value my commitment to truthiness, and that commitment to truthiness goes to this. Vanquish, whatever Vanquish's motto is, right, if they have, if it says Vanquish, this underneath, they should just change it to say, bottom lines over crawling lines, because that's where we are right now. And that's fine, because you know what? That's Axial's motto. That's most everybody else's motto. I can't I'm not going to sing the praises of everyone. If we're going to dump on Vanquish, let's dump on everybody. Gay Rover is slow cruise... Con oh, I'm sorry. Ghost Rover, formerly the Gate Rover, is slow rolling into frame. And he's slow rolling into frame because he's the wheel for the day. Why is he with the wheel for the day? He is a true analogy souffle now. He's a part souffle. He detonated his front ring and pinion in his element axle... Uh, uh, out at Mavericks, which is seemingly what Ma Ma Mavericks does. Mavericks blows up gearboxes, it blows up axles, it grenades uh, transfer cases. We find out that if you try to bash your rock crawler, sometimes things don't do so good for you. Rusty did great. So, after having... You're going too slow, dude. Let's get let's get over here. Ooh. Look at that big boy. Hey, big boy. Uh, and by the way, here's a little side note for you. See this little fella right here? Little wolf spider? Uh... If you see a spider out on the loose, it's a dude. They're the only ones that leave the web. Here's a little science for you. Uh, if you see a spider out on the loose, out of the web, there's only one reason he leaves the web. That's to go find a lady spider. Uh, to do lady spider things. So that uh, so when you see him out, and if you've ever wondered why a spider gets stuck in your bathtub or in your sink, he don't know what a bathtub or a sink is. He never left the web before. He just got a calling. He got the calling, and it was like, go find a lady spider. So, uh, yeah, he gets stuck in your sink. Or he crawls around here, and he doesn't know where to go. And I'll take him, and I'll put him outside, and a little while later, he'll be back. He doesn't, he doesn't know. He doesn't know anything. He's a spider. He's, he's not dumb. He just doesn't know. 
So, after replacing the ring and pinion gear in here for the second time, you'll notice these are not element axles. These are Air 44s. These are... Mental math. I'm, I'm doing that thing. What do you... You look up and to the right if you're trying to find information. You look up and to the left if you're lying. I'm looking up... I'm looking the way to try to remember. These are the axle housings from Toothless. I just bought Amazon cheap gear to finish them out, and I had a bunch of ring gears. You saw the ring and pinions in the last update. So he's got straight up Air 44s. And, as you may or may not know, he's a, he was all element underneath, so there's a Stealth X. We kicked the living hell out of the skid. He's like 12 degrees down there. Uh, I put an underdrive in the rear. So he's got 12% inside the gearbox, 9% here. So he's 21% overdrive. We're going to see how that does. I made no changes to link positionings, link lengths, anything. He is still... Let me find... I need something. Let me... Give me something. I need something of an appropriate height. This will do. So he was built as a long travel boy. All the guys on Reddit. It's Flex... Fr Wait. There you go. It's Flex Friday, everybody. Uh, but only if you built your rig to do it. Please don't put 110 millimeter shocks on your 10-2. It's like, don't do it. Like, it will give you the ability to do this, but it's going to ruin your handling at the same time. He can get away with these. He can get away with long arms because his chassis is a crazy thing that was built quite literally from the ground up to run 110s. I mean, does he have suspension action? He's got a, he's got a little bit. He's got a little bit. Um, it's like in that six, six and a half inches of flex in the rear there. So he has not touched a rock since I did the work on him. So he's a little bit of vanquish. He's a little bit of element. He's a little bit of axial. He's a little bit of Enjora. He's got some J concepts. He's got, he's got this and that. He's got that and the other. And, uh, what he is, is the antithesis of the, the trajectory of the industry. Woof. That was 75 cents worth of words, baby, easily, because he is what I see when I think about rock crawling. Build what you want, because you can be damn sure that the people making, the people paying other people to make the things so that they can resell them to you, I would call them manufacturers if they actually made anything. What they'll sell you is what they want to sell you. It has nothing to do with what you want or what you need. They're going to sell you a lot of things you need, you don't need, and they might every once in a while sell you something you want. So otherwise, what do you do? You get some parts together and you make it. You do it. You put battery on servo on axle. You put some AR-44s. You put a Phoenix body on it. He's the, he's the ultimate truggy. He's a good boy. We're going to go to where rocks are now. And uh, I am going to ruminate further. Or not. We'll find out when we get there. So, how windy did it get around here, you ask? Uh, it blew my wheelbarrow over. I had my wheelbarrow le leaning on a pile of dirt and it blew my wheelbarrow over. That's, that's pretty windy, right? It also walked an umbrella uh, all the way across the back here. Oh, that break over. He's got the break over. Once you get that skid over, he's wrapping one of the trees. To it. There it is. It's completely wrapped around the axle. I think I got the front of the skid dug in a little bit. So, so, wait, let me give it a little one of these. Nope. So while, while we're, oh, while we're piling on, let's. <laughs> Let's construct additional pylons. Element. Your pinion gears are too small, man. The ring and pinion, that pinion, hold that pinion gear up to an AR-44 pinion. It's tiny. And because it's tiny, it has less depth of engagement. And because it has less depth of engagement, you have to shim it very precisely. And even if it is shimmed very precisely, the inner bearing is too small. Yes, they corrected that going to a bigger bearing, and they went to a 5 by 12 which is not a normal bearing. 5 by 11 everybody's got those. 5 by 13s 
everybody's got those. Even 5x14, but 5x12, I had to buy 5x12 bearings specifically to fit SE axles. So instead what I do is I have all of the bushings from baseline. Uh, I put bearings in him gradually over time. Whenever he's being serviced for something, I just took bushings out and put bearings in because bearings are cheap. So I have all those bushings and a conventional housing, like what used to be in him, a regular element housing, runs a five by 10 on the inside, which is way too small for an inner pinion carrier bearing. So I just put a bushing in it. So all of my, ax all of my element axle rigs are all running a bronze oil bushing for the pinion carrier. Uh, try to blow one of those up. It's not, it's not a thing that happens. But at the same time, we shouldn't have to do that. It shouldn't be our responsibility to correct problems that were uh, generated in the design phase. And this guy, I don't know, perhaps, I don't think he's got full throw on his axles. Uh, I, did I set steering in points? Let's go look. I did. I, I might have. I don't know. Um, so it's all, it's all correctable, you know, it's all, well, I don't know if you can correct the micro pinion that's in a, well, I guess you could just make a new pinion and a new ring, but they're not high pinion axles. They had an opportunity to go high pinion and they, they, I mean, they shoulda, they shoulda. Element, where's your offset axle? Where's your offset pumpkin axle? Element, where's dig? What, why, why? Why no, why no dig? Wait, let me, hold on. Let me set the controller down. Where are we? Where are we? What, why no dig? Why, why no dig? Um, we would love it, you know. If Element released a dig add-on for the stealth, I would go through my fleet, count how many stealth X gearboxes I have, and buy that many. But, as is the case with many others, sometimes they'll give you what you want. And less often they'll give you what you need. None of us need RTRs. And I, and I mean that. I mean that wholeheartedly. If you have never owned an RC vehicle in your life of any kind, and you've decided that you want one, the first question is, how did you end up here? Like, what algorithm source got you here? Because that's wild. The second one is, you do not need an RTR. You don't. As a matter of fact, you don't want one. Because every RTR, to some degree, is a genuinely false economy. As they are going to sell you $10 worth of electronics for $100. And then they are going to charge you insane amounts to buy the pieces that assemble the vehicle as a whole in order to dissuade you from trying to build it yourself. So building it yourself, say we're, 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 we're hearkening back to the, the rig that's in there, that's CJ7. Building that CJ7 up from the ground is going to cost more than buying it as it sits there. But it really doesn't. Because that thing is 500 bucks. And without opening the box, we know that the included Spectrum electronics are awful. Awful objectively. And will need to be replaced. They're, they're, still, they're, still, uh, they're still giving us RTR servos that would have been the kind of thing that would have come on a, an RTR buggy before the LiPo battery was invented. They just, they just never... There was no motivation for them to make anything newer or better because I was just talking to uh, Mr. 2223 yesterday, as a matter of fact, about how it would cost manufacturers a negligible amount of money to include a 1080 and a rebuildable motor in every RTR rig, right? Put a Hobbywing 1080, put an Injora level $15 oh, uh, non-sealed can 540 in there and it would cost them pennies but it'll never happen it will never ever ever happen because somewhere hands got shaken 
And if you sell an RTR that has a proper speed control and a proper motor in it, then you don't need to go out and buy a speed control and motor to replace the crappy ones that came in the RTR. So manufacturers, and I would call them manufacturers if they manufactured anything, so companies that sell toy cars to the people like us, they know just sell it as an RTR and charge $100 more because the end user is going to have to replace all of that stuff to the tune of X amount of dollars anyway, right? They're going to have to spend the money anyway. So let's get them when they walk through the door and then get them again when they're walking out the door. And that is a financial reality. And I know it probably sounds pessimistic, not, not nihilistic, let's not go that far, but it, it, it definitely sounds very glass half empty. And no apologies, the, gl the glass is perpetually half empty because every time we go back, they've poured a little bit more water out of the glass. They poured a little bit more out. So, but the price is still the same, right? The, the, have, you, have you gone to a restaurant lately? A soda is $4. That soda is, you know, if you've ever worked in a restaurant before, soda is so cheap. Soda is so cheap. Uh, the only thing cheaper than soda is tea and coffee. And uh, the margins. Got to keep the lights on, man. I understand there's a bottom line. There's a bottom line in every market. There's a bottom line in the toy car market. But I think across the board. So let's, let's look at the big four. Vanquish, Element, Axial, Traxxas. They, I think they, I don't know. It's very cable company where once they've got you, they don't care about you anymore or cell phone carriers or anything that you have to sub into a service. They, they figure, oh, you're subscribed, you're engaged. At this point, we can do whatever we want and they can't get rid of us. But thankfully, there are upstarts, you know, the Mios axle, the nylon Mios axle is one of my favorite axles and they're $80 a set. So right there, uh, the, Mios, Mios, give us a straight axle. Th that, that same axle, that nylon with the same everything, just, just give us a straight axle version of that and make it use regular 10-2 universals in the front. There you go, and you're, and you're done. Uh, just do, do that for us, and uh, everything's golden. Well, also, if you really wanna do something for the hardcores, uh, sell a straight axle set, sell a portal axle set, and then also sell a set that's a straight axle front and a portal rear. If you sell a mullet set, you won't be able to keep them in stock. Because every actual comp guy that can get away with it under his ruling uh, will be putting a mullet in. Because why wouldn't you? It's just, it's just break over and departure, just better. Like, if there's a drawback to the mullet, the only drawback is that most of the time you get stuck having to buy a pair of axles and then you have an extra axle sitting around which means you have to build another rig. So I wouldn't even call that a drawback. If it's an excuse to build another rig, then that's, that's a net, that's a net sum good. That's a positive. So friends, followers, members, subscriber, loyal, loyalists to the Canyon. Those, you, you loyal few, you, all you new folk. And again, I don't want to sound like I'm kissing up to Injora. I just love to see the trajectory that Injora has made throughout the past year, right? Everybody says, sees, would see Injora and go, oh yeah, they, you know, they make knockoff wheels or whatever. No, those are Injoras on there. These guys right here, nobody else makes those. That, that, deep, that deep silver boy, the deep methods, it's the only way to get them. Uh, their inserts, let's talk about what they're doing with the inserts. They're dual stages and they're silicones. Economical. It's where I buy all my scale hardware, right? 
So I love seeing Enjora come out with new stuff, more stuff, better stuff. The chass Kronk's chassis is just a straight up Enjora with virtually no modification. I'm reaching for where Dig would be right now because I would love to turn him in a little bit. He had a little bit more steering on the elements with the big caster flip. I don't think I dialed in quite as much caster on these because I couldn't. Uh, it would rock the tie rod up too far and interfere with the servo. So I try to get my drag link and my tie rod nice and parallel at rest on a servo on axle. And that, that's where we ended up. I have zero complaints about how this dude is driving. The holds are doing the work. Canyon Soft inserts, Tim Tins, two wraps of fridge foam. He's, he is good. Do you see the little, see the little, little side slide there? That's the, that's the beauty of the hold. Uh, if you hold them up, <laughs> no pun intended, you can look straight through the tread lugs. There's like a gap. And if you get to just the right point on a side hill, it will slide away. I think this guy utilizes it as well as he does because he's so long travel. Like we're collapsed on the low side and pretty extended on the high side. But otherwise, like he's sitting really flat. The way his weight is centered, I never feel, well, okay. Let's, let's come around this way. Well, I, I thank you uh, so much for watching it, you know, if I could train myself to film the weekly update not on Friday, the Friday episode not on Friday, things would go a lot better, but I can't, I can't do it. There, there we go. To get to that tip point, like right here, that tip right here, that's all just because I'm steering. Like it wants to roll over that tire because how the contact patch is transferring. But because his travel is so long, trying to get this tire outside that little point. And by this tire, I mean driver front, like that. And then we cut back the other way. He is super responsive for a guy that's running massive long shocks with massive springs on him. And he got to where he is because he's made out of the things I want to do the things that I want. He is, he is yet another in the Canyon's installments of anti-RTRs because I, I will admit that RC four wheel drive Miller Motorsports, oh, that was tempting. But I knew it would be chock full of RC four wheel drive. And I just, again, 500 bucks. I just, I could not bring myself to do it. We're gonna, are we gonna get zero lift here? Zero lift. Okay, 9% more underdrive in this gent was, was 100% good. We, we did well. I think, I, I, you know what? I have a bearable lightness of being right now. I feel like the rant, ooh, catharsis. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for providing me with a venue for catharsis. Feels pretty good. I have obligations every Friday. The wife only works in the office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. She would work from home on, on Mondays and Fridays. So I gotta be done by lunch. No, know what I'm saying? So. Thank you so much for joining me here in the canyon. If you have any, any, and I, I do love the comments, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do voice them in the comments section below. I will complete a thought here as we, as we part ways for the day, and I will see you again very soon. And in between now, which is now, and then, which is then, I do invite you one and all to do your very best to have a good one, everybody. I would like to say a shout out, again, not playing fan service, not kissing up, uh, the Enjora Facebook group is apparently part of the key to my recent increase in viewership. Someone linked one of my insert reviews to the Facebook group, ah, Goose Bros, and uh, it was noticeable in the viewership. There's a lot of people over there in the Enjora uh, Facebook group. So if you're from the Enjora Facebook group, uh, welcome to the canyon. Thanks dropping by. Thanks for dropping by to everybody, to one, you one and all. Do all of the stuff that I said before. Um, have a good one. Enjoy your weekend, whatever that might be. If you're in one of those uh, places in Scandinavia where the snow is like up to your face, how do you people live? How do you live? Well, I hope you, uh, if you're living, keep on living. If you're surviving, keep on surviving. We'll see you in the next one. 
Have a good one, everybody. I gotta go be a grown-up.